Welcome to Trial Site News Weekly Roundup. My name is Adrian, and I'll be going over some of our top news stories from this past week. Please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be notified of future videos. Today we start with a serious SiteWatch news story. Google is gathering detailed health record information from millions of Americans. And it has not informed patients or doctors. The Wall Street Journal reports that St. Louis-based Ascension, the second largest health system in the U.S., is sharing lab results, diagnoses, and hospitalization records, as well as health histories complete with patient names and dates of birth with Google. And we'll keep you posted on the story as it continues to develop. Serious stuff. And now we turn to Alzheimer's related news stories. EIP Pharma announced that the reversed SD study evaluating niflamipramod in early stage Alzheimer's disease did not meet its primary objective of improving episodic memory but did meet its secondary objective of target engagement and proof of mechanism. Data from the study will be presented by the principal investigator of the study, Professor Philip Sheltons of the VU Medical Center in Amsterdam, Netherlands, at the clinical trials in Alzheimer's disease from the CTAD meeting in San Diego on Thursday, December 5th, 2019 at 11.45 a.m. To help ensure our readers can make the most well-informed decisions regarding their health and medical treatments, TrialSite News is providing complete summaries of various clinical investigation sites. These sites are part of current clinical trials and will be covering the quality of care at these sites, their physicians' reputations, and the details of the trials they are involved in. In the latest summary, we'll be researching Josephine Wallach Munchauer Neurology, Treating Alzheimer's Disease. Turning now to cancer-related news stories, Merck and Pfizer announced top-line results of the Phase 3 Javelin Gastric 100 study evaluating Bavenchio avalumumab as first-line maintenance therapy following induction chemotherapy in patients with unresectable locally advanced or metastatic HER2 negative gastric or GEJ cancer versus continuation of chemotherapy or best supportive care. While the study showed clinical activity, the primary endpoints were not reached. Meanwhile, Longevity is the nation's leading lung cancer-focused nonprofit group. The organization recently featured stories of lung cancer survivors and their families in its Inhale for Life clinical trials public service campaign. The social media video series aims to educate and encourage people living with lung cancer to explore treatment options that may be viable to them via clinical trials. Meanwhile, the University of Florence researchers, in collaboration with London's Institute of Cancer Research, have uncovered a potential cause of sustained resistance to hormone therapy in the most common form of breast cancer. The findings could help us someday find new treatments to overcome hormone-resistant breast cancer. You can sign up for Trial Site News Daily Digest for updates on this story from this research effort. Meanwhile, Patrick Sung, Ph.D., who left Yale University, was recruited back to the University of Texas Health Science Center. San Antonio in 2019, a cancer biologist, he hopes to translate the knowledge of genetic mutations such as BRCA1 and 2 into better clinical care for patients. In just a short amount of time, his research has attracted $20.9 million in funding. Elsewhere, Aslan Pharmaceuticals announced top-line data from the treetop study which evaluated varlitinib versus capacetabine in second-line biliary tract cancer or BTC patients. Varlitinib did not meet the primary endpoints of progression-free survival or PFS and overall response rates or ORR as assessed by ICR according to Resist. The safety findings were consistent with the known profile of varlitinib. Now we turn to clinical trial related news stories. 
A new Apple Research app offers participants to participate in three landmark multi-year longitudinal studies in partnership with leading academic and research institutions. This represents the ongoing evolution to decentralized patient-centric clinical trials. Elsewhere, private equity continues to become more intrigued by clinical trials. From investing in clinical investigational sites to services providers to disruptive technologies, funds are seeking attractive opportunities. Most recently, buyout firm Leonard Green and Partners joined private equity group Arsenal Capital Partners as co-owners of WCG for $3.1 billion. Interestingly, the investment arm of Danish drug maker Nova Nordisk also participated in this latest recapitalization. WCG started off as a merger of IRBs and has grown to a diversified clinical trials technology and services venture. Researchers from the Intermountain Healthcare Heart Institute in Salt Lake City, Utah, found that simple nudges in the form of texts, emails, and phone calls not only help patients fill the first statin prescription, but also continue to improve them adhere to their medication instructions over the long term. They used a new technology that could be implemented in clinical trials for better patient engagement. Now, Trial Site News recently attended and reported on the Utah Life Sciences Summit held earlier this November at the Salt Lake Marriott, during which three tracks were provided for registrants to learn more on a range of subjects relating to the life sciences industry. In the first tract, Trial Site News attended the life sciences sessions titled Trending Topics at FDA, De Novo Classification Proposed Rule, and AI ML Software Regulation. Continuing on now, integrated clinical trials platform Javara, offering clinical research as a care option to physician networks and health systems, inked a deal with Privia Health recently so that the latter can offer industry-sponsored clinical trials to their Privia Medical Group. Gulf Coast and Privia Medical Group, George Patients. The goal, let physicians networks focus on what they do best while offering the clinical trials capacity and competency heretofore not easily achievable to clinical trial sponsors and CROs. Moleculin announced the US FDA approved a request for investigational new drug IND status for WP1066 to be used in a phase one clinical trial for the treatment of children with recurrent or refractory malignant brain tumors. The request was made by physician researchers at Emory University, including Dr. Toby McDonald, professor of the Department of Pediatrics at Emory University School of Medicine, director of pediatric neuro-oncology at Aflac Cancer and Blood Disorder Center, and principal investigator for the clinical trial. The trial will be conducted at the Aflac Cancer and Blood Disorder Center at Children's Healthcare of Atlanta. Meanwhile, Kytus Pharmaceuticals announced that, following a strategic portfolio review, the company will restructure to focus all resources and investments on the company's NK cell therapy platform and product candidates. As part of this restructuring, the company will continue development of ATIR 101 and stop the ongoing Phase 3 trial. In addition, the restructuring will result in a reduction of approximately half of its workforce, a reduction in external clinical trial costs associated with the Phase 3 study, and a reduced company cash burn. Genetech announced positive data from Part 2 of the Sunfish study evaluating Rizdapalm in patients aged 2 to 25 years with type 2 and 3 spinal muscular atrophy, or SMA. Data demonstrated statistically significant improvements in the overall study population with type 2 or 3 SMA. The treatment was well tolerated. Now, this past week, I interviewed Linda Lopez of UT Health San Antonio about why we need diversity in clinical trials research. You can see the interview here on our channel or at trialsitenews.com, and links will be provided in the description below. Turning out autoimmune-related news stories, over a decade ago, French researchers from the Department of Dermatology with Inserm Chu Hotel Dieu reported that they conducted a small pilot study using zinc salts on hydrodenitis suppurativa patients. The small study showed some promise in that 36% of the patients experienced total remission. They found that zinc salts could offer a new therapeutic alternative for the treatment of hydrodenitis suppurativa. 
Trial site news research team found a number of other studies evidencing the possibility that the use of zinc could benefit HS patients. Finally, trial site news viewers struggling with HS recently communicated to us that certain zinc regimens seem to be helping. And we'll keep you posted on the story as it continues to develop. Turning now to opioid-related news stories, a current bunion surgery clinical trial may provide some answers. Lotus Clinical Research has a clinical trial testing its non-opioid pain medication called CA008 during an elective unilateral transpositional first metatarsal osteotomy for the correction of hallux versus valgus deformity, also known as bunion surgery. Meanwhile, researchers from the University of Connecticut and the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill have been collaborating on developing specifically designed nanoparticles for targeted drug delivery. The team have launched a new venture based on the research. Located at UConn's Technology Incubation Program, or TIP, NAMI Therapeutics is born. Turning now to PTSD-related news stories, Cohen Veterans Bioscience, or CVBA non-profit research organization dedicated to fast-tracking personalized diagnostics and therapeutics for brain health, inked a strategic collaboration with Perexo Biotech, the clinical research organization's CRO, or new division. This is for the CVB's adaptive platform trial evaluating pharmacotherapeutics to treat post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD. Do you have any clinical news you'd like us to report on? If so, let us know. Contact information is in the box below. If you'd like to watch more videos, click the playlist that will appear to my right at the end of this video. Thank you for joining us for this week's Trial Site News Roundup. And remember, subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of updates. See you next time.